here we have an overall vector that we're calling v. The x component is positive 3. And the question is asking you for the y component. Notice the question mark tells us the question. This angle is 25 degrees. From the information that we're given, try to find the y component. Did you start by writing down the positive directions? Yes? Good. Uh, but if you didn't, why not? Um, get into the habit of starting by writing down the positive directions. Uh, you need to write down the positive directions for every problem. You might as well do that at the start. Okay, um, now we can use an asterisk to show that this was the number that we were given. And this is the angle we're focusing on. Let us make a plan as to which trig function to use. Well, it would help here to label our hypotenuse our adjacent side, that's not the adjacent side, this is the adjacent side. This vertical side is adjacent to the angle with the asterisk, and this side here is opposite. So which sides do we need to be using? Well, we need to be using, we need to be using this opposite side because that's what we know the number about. We need that, a trig function that refers to the opposite side, because that's what we know the number about. And we need a trig function that refers to the adjacent side, because that's what the question was about. However, we would not want a trig function that refers to the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is not something we've been told, and the hypotenuse is not what the question was about. So let's look for a trig function that deals with the opposite and adjacent sides. That would be a tangent. So we're going to use tangent. Tangent of 25 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, let's see, the opposite side here is has a length of 3. That's our v sub x. Now, of course, we don't plug in positive 3. We just plug in 3 because these are lengths. Lengths are always positive. You don't indicate the sign on something if it's always positive. So here we're just using the magnitude of the opposite side, which is 3. And the adjacent side here, v sub y. Now, I hope that when you did this, you used v sub y with a dot uh, because, of course, we're working with trig functions, and trig functions refer And trig functions refer uh, just to magnitudes, not to signed components. So the trig function is not going to tell us v sub y. It's only going to tell us v sub y with a dot, the magnitude of the y component. Now we need to get rid of the fractions by cross multiplying. Well, multiplying diagonally in one direction, uh, we would get v sub y with a dot times the tangent of 25. And multiplying diagonally in the other direction, we have 1 times 3, which is 3. Now, we still have to get the v sub y with the dot by itself. How do we get rid of this tangent 25 term? Well, not by doing an inverse tangent. That would just give us a mess. How is this tangent connected to the v sub y? It's connected via multiplication, right? This is v sub y times the tangent of 25. So we do the opposite. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to have to do 3 divided by tangent of 25. We can do that in one step on our calculator. That comes out to be 6.4. So v sub y magnitude is 6.4. Now we're not, not done yet because the question was not asking for the magnitude. It was asking for the signed component without the dot. So let's work that out. We know the magnitude is 6.4. Now, what about the sign? 
Well, we can see that this y component is pointing up, pointing up, and up is our positive direction. So the answer is that v sub y is positive 6.4. I suspect there may be some people out there who wrote that this was the answer. Uh, if you're one of these people, um, then you got the problem wrong. This is not the answer. V sub y is not 6.4. V sub y is positive 6.4. V sub y in, um, is a signed component, so we've got to indicate the sign. Um, and we have to indicate the signs not just in front of negative numbers, but also in front of positive numbers. So this would be wrong. Uh, at least for a beginning student who's trying to build good notation, this would be wrong. Um, this is positive, so we have to indicate that with a positive sign. We don't need a positive sign here because this is just the magnitude, but this is not the final answer. The final answer is the full sign component without the dot, and that has to include a sign, even though it's positive. Well, this was another example that's a little bit different from the standard physics problem. Normally in physics, you're given the overall vector and asked to find the components. Uh, but we've been doing a couple problems where you were given a component and asked to figure something else out. Even though that's a little unusual, you should definitely be able to solve that in your physics course. Uh, it's the same basic type of problem because in any case, we're still being given one side and one angle. We're given one side and one angle, we can use the same basic approach uh, to solve that problem. Um, it's just maybe a little bit trickier to find the right trig functions. But notice how we've been um, figuring out the right trig function. You want to use a trig function that uses the number you've been given and you want to use a trig function that uses what the question is about. You want to use a trig function that uses the number you're given, and you want to use a trig function that uses what the question was about. Here we were given a number about the opposite side, and the question was about the adjacent side. That took us to the tangent. We weren't given any numbers for um, the overall vector, the hypotenuse, and the question was not about the hypotenuse. So it didn't make sense to use sine or cosine, because those refer to the hypotenuse. Remember that if any of these problems are giving you difficulty, if you're not getting them right the first time, or if you're getting them right without using the right notation, please just redo them. There's no point going on to the next problem in the video unless you can get the previous problems right easily. Keep redoing problems until they're easy before you go on to the next problem.